In this section, the Node.js fundamentals, we will be discussing about the basic stuff about Node.js. You know, how to create a SQL connection. That's basic because whenever we create a server or a website, we do access the data from the backend, right? You guys all know who has created applications. It's the same way. We will discuss about those. We will discuss about event looping, non-blocking IO and more. Today in this video, we will talk about the event looping and the blocking IO performance. We will discuss about asynchronous programming, which is in its heart of the Node.js. We will learn asynchronous programming, which is very important programming technique in JavaScript and Node.js. We will look at why Node can achieve a high or very high IO performance through the event loop. Then we will tap into callback functions. What is event looping? We're going to take a look at the single threaded concurrency model of Node.js, which is based on non blocking IO operations. We will also learn how to set delays in a program. A secret of Node.js programming is a paradigm in which the flow of the program is determined by events. For example, the mouse clicks, or like the button presses, or the looping, any, any, any of them. Typically, in a computer system, input and output are the most expensive operations. The system needs to wait for the I.O. operations to be complete and hence it's called blocking I.O. or synchronous I.O. But what is non-blocking I.O.? When we know blocking I.O. blocks the system operations for the input and output operations, non-blocking is opposite of it. The involved waiting time, which is usually the performance bottleneck of the system. The blocking I.O actually is the bottleneck of the performance of the system because it actually waits, waits and waits for the IO operations to be finished. We all know that Node is a very high performance server. What makes Node so popular and different from others is that it uses event-based programming model and the non-blocking IO operations like I said. Node takes an approach that serves all the requests from a single thread known as the event loop. When node receives the request from a client, it will put the request into an event queue. The event loop runs indefinitely to retrieve a request in the event queue. In one case, if the request doesn't involve a blocking IO operation, what happens is the node will simply process it and repair the response. It will return the response and send it back to the client. In another case, if the request requires blocking IO, what happens here is that node will delegate it to a worker. This is a worker thread and a thread pool. It will delegate the operation to the worker thread and thread pool to work on the blocking IO operation. The blocking IO operation may be associated with the callback function. When the blocking IO operation is complete, the worker thread will prepare the response and send it back to event loop, which then runs the callback function and sends the response back to the client. Therefore, the main program is not blocked by the I.O. operations. So, Node keeps a single threaded of that loop for our code and everything else runs in parallel. That's the secret of Node, why it has such a high performance of I.O. Now we covered all the four questions. We will go to the terminal and we will create a simple JS file and let's see how to set timer. I created a simple file set time.js. In this, let's write three simple lines of code. We will console log some of the other text and let's see how it is done in Node. Here are three console.logs. The first one will be a simple text, which is this is the first log. Second one, let's say it's second, and third one being the third. When this set time.js file runs, what happens is the node will simply output the first written, the console log, the second one, and third one in an order. Let's compile this code and see how it goes. We are in the current folder where the file is actually present. Let's say node and the file name was set time.js. And it console logged, it returned the three texts which we actually wrote in the console.log in the correct order first second and third now let's see what happens when we actually set time when we give some time to pause 
in order to do that we can actually type set time out this is a function which actually takes another function in it and in this function it actually wraps the piece of code which we want it to get delayed in our case let's just delay this console.log the second one all we need to do is cut that out and keep it in that wraps in that bracket in the set timeout function we need to actually give the amount of time we want it to get delayed right so the second parameter will be the amount of time you want to get this piece of code to be delayed the first one will be the code wrapped in the brackets itself and the second one will be the parameter which takes the seconds or the amount of time you want it to get delayed let's say 2000 or 3000 3000 is nothing but three seconds when we run it now what happens here is the first and third will be outputted and the second one will take actually three seconds to actually execute. This is how you can actually set time 